Hi and welcome to the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast for athletes, coaches and professionals who want to achieve their goals faster. I'm David Charlton and I'll be sharing proven methods from leading athletes, coaches and experts that will help you get the most from your talent. Today's show is sponsored by Functional Intelligent Training, who are a sports injury clinic located in Gosforth, near Newcastle upon Tyne, and specialise in athlete development, nurturing future champions, strength and conditioning support, and excellent rehabilitation services. Today's podcast is a short bite of mental toughness, if you like, where I reflect on parts of episode one and episode two. So where the theme is going to be around high levels of commitment. When we think of commitment, we think of drive, we think of focus, doing, taking action. Let's be honest, these are all fantastic attributes and they're attributes of successful people. But, and there is a but, this attribute can also cause some issues, cause some challenges. And now we're in a, in a different world, in a different situation. There's pressures and stresses that people haven't experienced before. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the downside of commitment and what it is that you can do to help yourself should you fall into that category. So you might be a business professional, a business owner, and in this current situation might have you worried about your business, worried about the future. You may have financial worries and you're struggling to adapt to the now. Or, you know, you might be an athlete who's got such a desire to achieve, achieve their goals, achieve their ambitions and dealing with this uncertainty, not knowing whether you're going to compete in a few weeks or in a few months, not being able to train. You might be worried about losing your skills. And often what I find with committed people, again, these highly motivated people is they can be busy, very, very busy. And they just keep on going. They keep on doing. And if you're one of those, what I'd like you to do right now is Ask yourself the question, am I being really effective in my approach? Is my approach right now going to help me achieve my goals, my long-term goals? So I'm going to assume that you're goal-orientated. You set goals for yourself, you like chasing those goals. When you have setbacks, when there's obstacles, it doesn't worry you so much. You're able to keep on going and keep on going and persevering. In episode one, Doug talked about other elements of mental toughness and how they may come into play. So one of the elements is learning orientation. And just because you're really committed, really, really motivated, and if you find yourself low in this in this element of learning orientation, you might be someone who doesn't learn from your mistakes. You may repeat mistakes on a regular basis. You might not take the time out to actually reflect on your approach and question yourself. In episode two, Steve Judge talked about trying to overcome his Italian rival. He'd won the world championship once and the new the new arrival, the new Italian came onto the scene and was about four minutes faster than him. So he talked about having to look himself in the mirror and be honest with himself in order to get to that next level. So the question there is for you, are you being honest with yourself? Danger for highly committed, highly motivated people is burnout. That can be one trap. Are you close to burning out? Physically, does your body not feel great? Are you irritable at times? Those are some signs of burnout. If you work as part of a team, there's a chance that you might go on to overwork if others don't pull their weight and play a part. Danger with that could be that you get frustrated, potentially bitter and twisted with some of your colleagues. Another challenge, and this time I'm going to look at it from a leadership perspective. So if you're part of a leadership team and you're a doer, you're highly goal-driven, you've got to recognise that the way you operate has a huge impact on the culture and your colleagues around you and the wider workplace. You may be someone who sees meetings as a waste of your time. And if that is the case, it is really important for you to try and unpick your beliefs, your unconscious beliefs around why that is. Because meetings, if they're done in the right way, can be hugely effective because they prevent communication breakdowns. They can be really helpful towards trust in a team and building team spirit and team morale, as well as identifying important processes that need to be tweaked. By not engaging in team meetings, perhaps not attending on a regular basis, 
are not being fully present, your actions can cause a multitude of problems where people in your team who place a higher value on learning and development can feel let down and demoralized by your approach. And then that can have a negative impact on the way they work and the messages that they send out harming overall morale and togetherness. I mentioned earlier there about repeating mistakes. Are you someone who repeats mistakes? It doesn't take the time to learn and reflect. And if that's the case, it might be because you're actually you're not sure how to reflect. Nobody's actually told you how to reflect. Today we tend to find with technology, people aren't actually very good at writing things down. I'd encourage you to write things down. And I'm gonna talk about two little methods that you could use to help yourself. One is very straightforward. It's nice and simple. It's the start, stop, continue approach. So what you would do is, in a journal, on a bit of paper, when you're critiquing a performance or critiquing the way you're going about your business on a day-to-day basis, start with start. What is it you need to start doing in order to achieve your goals? And get some little bullet points, have a brainstorm. Then go with stop. What is it you need to stop doing to be effective? Again, have a little brainstorm there. And then lastly, continue. What is it you're doing quite well at the moment? What do you need to continue? Now, I really like this approach because of the wording. Some people advocate looking at three positives, three good things about your day or your situation, looking at the areas of improvement or your weaknesses. I'm not so keen on that one. The word weakness can and improvement can actually evoke the wrong kind of emotion. At least for some people it does. You find some people can be very, very self-critical and they find it really, really difficult to look at the positives of situations because for years and years they've just chosen to focus on the negatives. In a way, they've chosen to try and chase perfection, which, let's face it, doesn't exist. And then they would look at action plans as well. For that reason, I quite like this start, stop, continue idea, just because the, the wording isn't so strong. Another way to reflect is by using a, I'm going to call a six step process here. What you can do is you could describe the event, what actually is happening right now. We know the coronavirus is happening right now in our world. So how is that affecting you? The next part is feeling. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Make a note about that. So is the coronavirus, the uncertainty in the situation, making you feel angry. I know I've been there. My punch bags come in really useful. Is it making you feel overwhelmed or really uncertain and indecisive about things? Then we'd look at evaluation. What was good and bad about this experience? Maybe the bad thing for you is the negative emotion and it's impacting on the way you're eating or the way you're sleeping. Make a note of that. Then we've got analysis. What sense can you make of this situation? would be the next question. So maybe you are overeating, you're snacking. What could you do differently? Are you just snacking for the sake of snacking? Then we have conclusion. What else could you have done? Well, if I'm overeating, maybe actually rather than picking up a biscuit or some chocolate to supposedly re-energize myself, maybe I could just walk away from the kitchen if you're working from home, or maybe I could pick up something healthier, some fruit or some cereal or something else that I enjoy eating. Lastly is the action plan. If it arose again in this situation, what would you do? In other words, what are you going to do differently going forward? And obviously this is the most important thing to think about. All of the most successful people are motivated, they're highly driven, but they are self-aware enough because they do reflect and they do have support from other people to question them in this sort of way. And then lastly, they make changes, they take action. So be one of them, make some changes and take some action. In fact, don't take some action, take massive action. The benefits of you heeding this advice and taking a step back to reflect on your approach could be absolutely huge for you. Yes, it could improve your efficiency and depending whether you're in business or in sport, there'll be different outcomes related to that. Could be improved performance, which sees you go up the rankings somewhere along the line. You end up with more money, in your pocket to to spend potentially or if you're struggling a little bit with your well-being and mental health there's a likelihood that that is going to improve which would be fantastic i hope these observations that i've shared in this bite of mental toughness have been helpful for you and that you go on to tune in to the next podcast where i reflect on episodes three and four where peter ramage and chris paisley shared some fantastic stories and advice
you'll find in the show notes on our website resources that link to this episode where there'll be details on the start stop continue framework and the six step process to reflecting i'd like to give a big thanks to today's sponsors functional intelligent training who are a sports injury clinic located in gosford near newcastle upon tyne and specialize in athlete development nurturing future champions strength and conditioning support and excellent rehabilitation services thank you for listening to demystifying mental toughness today to sign up for tips and advice to help you be the best that you can be go to wwwsport excellence.co.uk and sign up to the Mental Edge newsletter.